A really nice still morning, fish rising and lots of insect life about would be the perfect way to start the day. Everything you're doing is about being as careful and quiet as possible so not to disturb the fish. Then if you're putting that fly out and the first time that fish rises, takes the fly and the tug on the line is just exhilarating, it makes it all worthwhile getting up at that time in the morning. The Nidderdale is an area of outstanding natural beauty. And I don't just mean subjectively, it's got the certifications to prove it. This stunning stretch inspired the formation of the Nidderdale Angling Club back in 1897, and it's still here today. The River Nid weaves its way through the impressive Yorkshire countryside and is home to some truly wild fish. John Shilcock, the president of the club, has been fishing in the local area all his life. So my grandmother used to take me down to the local canal I used to catch perch and uh, little Tommy Ruff and fish like that. And I sort of, at that point, fell in love with water. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'd been involved in rivers for the rest of my life, really. After much planning, in 2021, the Nidderdale Angling Club changed the methods to managing the water, opting for a more holistic approach that has seen a radical transformation. They used to stop the river with farmed trout, and every now and again I would catch one of the little wild fish, and they were so much more beautiful. I thought, do you know, we really ought to do something to try and encourage this wild stock. There were a few different issues with the river, but it was more of a change of attitude of our members, wanting to improve the ecosystem of the river for the wild fish uh, and look at ways that we could do that through uh, habitat improvement. The big collaboration we had was with the Wild Trout Trust, helping with funding, but also more importantly, with expertise and advice on how we could actually improve the habitat to get the best benefit for the work that we were doing. In terms of adding fish into the river on an annual basis that aren't suited really to the river and will just disappear out of the system fairly rapidly versus getting the river right for producing its own wild fish that will remain in situ all the year round and fulfill their life cycle within the river. It's a bit of a no-brainer really for the angling club to, to make that transition. In terms of improving the potential for the wild population, there's actually quite a lot of good adult habitat and older juvenile habitat within the main river Nid, but there's relatively little spawning habitat, and obviously to get big fish you need little fish. The club focused on the tributaries of the Nid to carry out restoration work and create spawning habitats. These important parts of the river are where the juvenile fish will spend the first year of their lives. So this channel has been put here artificially. It's straighter and therefore steeper, and it's over time ripped out a lot of the gravel which the fish should be spawning on. So what we've done very simply is introduce a load of woody deflectors, which are short logs pinned into place with rebar. And hopefully you can see up this short stretch that the flow has been kicked from side to side, which introduces diversity, traps some of that gravel and should make the tributary a lot easier for the fish to spawn in. We can all appreciate that restoring the natural habitat will also improve the fishing, but the work doesn't stop there. Maintaining and monitoring these efforts is key to ensuring the future of fishing in these areas, and that's exactly what the Nidderdale Angling Club did. As a key instigator of all of the habitat restoration work that's been going on here, you could have quite easily just gone, well, we've We've done the work and hopefully the fish will appreciate it. But you've gone a step further and you've got proof of your success now. Yes, that's right. One of the things we wanted to make sure we could do was to prove to our membership that the work we were doing was being successful and improving the river. Um, so the first thing we needed to do was to get a baseline of the fish within the river. That was done in conjunction with the Wild Trout Trust in e-fishing or electrofishing the river. So we got a good baseline and then every year since we've been electrofishing again at the same time of year to compare those first results to the results that we've been getting after the work has been done. We also then went further than that and decided to implement a catch return system. That then gave us um, some fantastic data that we could use and give back to the membership to show them how 
the uh, impact of the work that we've been doing has, uh, has actually followed through into increasing wild fish population. This might be a tricky one off the top of your head, but I don't suppose you know what that increase has been at the population level of your trout and grayling. This particular stream has been uh, electrofish for three years. Um, from the first year compared to the second year of fishing, we had over double the number of um, small trout and young of year trout in this particular stream. Um, and then a small increase on um, 2022 because of the, the weather conditions, but still another increase. On our other stream that we did the work on, we had over double increase from the first year to the second year. And have you found that you've had a high uptake of your members wanting to actually be involved in this data collection? Yeah, at first it was always a struggle to introduce a new uh, method of uh, uh, providing data to us. But now that we've got people used to the idea and being able to do it instantly rather than having to wait till the end of the year, we've had a great uptake with over half the membership filling in catch returns and from the end of 2021 now to now we've had nearly 600 returns posted on uh, our uh, section of the river. That's incredible. It does seem like you've got all bases covered here but do you have any future plans for the stretch of the river? Uh, yeah we're continuing to introduce gravel into this particular part of the system. We're also creating wildlife corridors by getting our local farmers to allow us to put a um, a small buffer zone at the side of the river and fence that off and allow that to go wild so it creates really good habitat for um, mammals and insects. All in all, you're a very forward-thinking angling club. You seem to have got all bases covered. <laughs> we are trying, but there are always more things that we can do. So we constantly are working with our membership to make sure that the uh, money and time that we're spending on habitat improvement will improve the whole river ecosystem for all our anglers going forwards.